Yo, 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 what's up guys? It's Blake, AKA Philco Ba here with another installment of my Philco 1959 Philco Predicta Showcase. This one today I got for you, a 1959 Philco Predicta slant back tabletop model. I'm um, also known as the full dress model because of the fully finished back. Um, this bad boy from what I can gather is actually exceptionally rare. Unfortunately for me, I stumbled onto it early in my Predicta collecting career. Um, I got it from Larry Whitlock, an awesome Dallas area Predicta restoration guru, uh, reseller and master. Uh, he sold me the shell. And from there I went on the quest um, because as a picture, will sh I'll put up the picture up here. This is how I got it from Larry. Um, as you can see, uh, it, 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 I had to piece it together. It was just a shell. I had to get a CRT for it. I had to identify that it had the oddball 9060 chassis, which I was able to do after I figured out the model number for the, for this set from the uh, Predicta brochure. I was able to cross-reference it with the SAMs, um, which shows the models that had the 9L60 chassis and this being one of them. Um, and then also from there, I also found an internal document uh, from Philco that showed um, this set with the back off that was the 9060 chassis. I could tell because I'm very familiar with that chassis. Most of the oddballs, all of the oddball sets, including the uh, Miss America sets have the uh, 9060 chassis. Uh, so after I got all the pieces for this set, got a, a chassis out of a, another uh, full dress that I, or a 1959 predict the full dress that I had found that uh, was just a shell. The CRT was neck, didn't even have a swivel. Um, I got the knobs from that as well. Um, from there, it went to the uh, Predicta mechanic, as I like to call him, master, uh, Dan Jones. Uh, Dan Jones is Predicta badass in the community. Uh, he rocked out this chassis. Uh, it was really a bear. 9L60 chassis are a bear, but I'll let him tell you guys more about that. My love be true. I think you can hear a lot of the blues, which was typical of the day, especially with some of the drumming. There's a, you know, and the way that Terry's playing some of his bass notes. And, you know, but Tony's just, he's, he's off the hook, man. Tony's just like, he, he's already off the edge of the world, so. All right, Dan, you want to get on camera and tell the camera what you did? Let me, let me turn it down. Yeah. All right, yeah. Dr. Jones. <laughs> Essentially, um, you know, when I was at your house back in July, um, you provided me with all the parts for this. Um, so my task was taking all these pieces and figuring out how to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, more or less. And uh, you know, I think we had one picture of with, with of this set with like the back off from like yeah. That. I've got a bunch of pictures from when I had it sitting out in the garage and was taking care of all the mechanical stuff. But you know the feet were missing off the cabinet, so we put new feet on it. Uh, I got the tuner mounted, the CRT. Um, we made sure the chassis mounting was secure and everything. Then going through the electronic restoration of it. Um, you know, the sweep board had a crack in it, so there was three or four traces that had to be mended. Um, the usual recapping, going through, checking resistors, things like that. Um, then getting it together, and then realize even though the flyback rang well on the high voltage side, one of the lower end windings was open, so I wasn't getting any high voltage in that. So. Jason came to the rescue with a new flyback, so we got that in there, at least that got it up and running. Um, I had some other headaches to deal with along the way. Two of them were caused by my own mistakes. I used the wrong resistor because I didn't read the color band right. So I was chasing my tail with that for a little while. Um, but once we got all that figured out, then it was more just getting it dialed in and um, you know, getting it where, it where it's at now. It looks really good. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Jason Neal, another collaborator of ours, he uh, sent a flyback in the midnight hour for us when we really needed it um, and has also been invaluable in advice with Dan as far as when Dan's ever gotten caught um, between not knowing. I mean, He's my phone a friend. Yeah. <laughs> with Regis, the, I'd like to phone a friend. <laughs> with, with a predictor, you really run into the fact that after you recap it, you still got to figure out what's actually wrong with it because it's never that simple. And uh, Dan spends countless hours even just recapping it. So you got to have somebody to bang your head against almost just to see what you're not looking at, really. Yeah. So, but it, it, yeah, definitely it turned out great. Thank you guys so much for watching. As you can see, the slant back's a worthy addition to the 1959 Philco Predictor Showcase.
the full dress wall is alive and well. The Slantback is arguably the rarest model of the full dress set. I've only ever come across this one to be completely finished. Um, as you can see, the full dress wall is pretty. I have, I, I know that I initially start, after my last video, I made comment that I was going to do another video on the Philco Predicta brochure. However, I find it much more relevant and a lot more appealing and appeasing to myself uh, to do a video individually when I get these sets kind of going as they come through or when I find them. So I think that'll be what we do instead of getting a full length tour. So stay tuned. I got another set coming here real soon. Thank you. 